know, we used to have this discussion in 2021. The captain, I'm sure he remembers in the voice chat whenever like RH disappeared, remembering like now three years ago, it was July of 2021. Because before yeah. that, he used to be in the voice chat all the time. You know, he was yeah. either yeah. there once or twice a week in the voice chat, and then he was always in the in the in the written chat. What what are your thoughts on that, Captain? Well, uh, I don't know, man. If he was to do like a satoshi out and just disappear, I think that the community is strong enough, in a sense, for itself to survive. I think the let's say you know products in quotation marks that RH made, like say Hex dot com, hundred percent uptime, running on four different chains, like is, you know, just itself can stand for itself, right? Um, if community is counting on a single individual to like pump their bags, then that's maybe not the best plan. You know, it'd be nice if, if that was a uh, option, but I wouldn't, <laughs> count on it. I wouldn't count on it all day. Right. Like you the thing properly and then you, it should work for you no matter what, even if, you know, sock daddy or whatever, whoever wants to call it, whatever name doesn't, you know, pump it. Right. Um, and then you think about Paul's chain. That's another discussion. But I mean, that's run by the community. He yanked the validators at the beginning. Um, you know, it's it's fully, you know, run by by the people for the people. Um, so if he were to just bounce, uh, he'd give him like three weeks or two weeks or whatever you want to say. And he'd probably be, you know, be being you know, his own individual again and then just playing the game like everybody else, which. You know, it's kind of sad being under that scrutiny. Um, if I was him, let's say, uh, being all under that scrutiny where you can't just make plays because you have all these other things uh, squishing you in such a direction where you can't just have like freedom of choice or freedom of speech or freedom of assembly, you know, all the different things that we sack for. So I think uh, the community is strong enough to keep it held up. I like that. I wish that we had done that in 21 whenever we, uh, we started having the debate, you know, what would happen with our age. And instead, we just, we kind of would focus on everything else and would focus on all these transactions. And I remember, I mean, the day that I wish that we had started to ignore the OA and everything. And it was probably whenever uh, all the experts started bringing in Gunther the Dumpter <laughs> to uh, and analyze the OA. You remember that? The whole fought it and like how everyone was so excited about the fought it. Like we need, we need a fought it. You know, it was like everyone was so focused on this audit that like uh, about knowing exactly what, what the captain just mentioned, you know, like who had the who had the balance, who had this, who had that, who was making this move, that move. I mean, the only reason that I'm mentioning uh, this right now is because for me, it changes, you know, like if I know it's our age making these moves, then I, I kind of don't care. You know, like I said, some people were talking to me about price and all this and that. I don't care about price, guys. I've been in crypto for 13 years. I know that the price goes up and down. Yeah, yeah. It's a guarantee. Like, right. I mean, look at 25 years out. I guarantee the price is up. Exactly. That was, I guess that was my point that I was like trying to say. And then right away it triggers a bunch of people. And so I was like, guys, I'm not, I'm not trying to trigger anyone. But at the same time, it's like, if, if I'm asking the question about like, Hey, would it make a difference? Who's handling these funds? And then I feel that we were telling a lot of people like, Hey guys, don't, don't be looking at those accounts because we, we can't control what those accounts do. And back then it was the two accounts. It was the, the original address and the flush address. Right, because the OA, everyone was looking at well, what's going to happen with uh, with the hex units that were getting sent to that OA, right? Because the OA was getting like half of the supply. At the same time, the flush address was was getting the ETH. A lot of people always joke about that question: "Where's the ETH?" Yeah, that's a beauty from back in the days. Where did the ETH go? Right, <laughs> and then they think is OA related, but it's related to the flush address. Um, and again, I wish that we would just. Um, Heidi, can I jump in for a sec? Of course, okay. please, Captain. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So, so the question was uh, kind of proposed that uh, if it was RH making the moves, uh, yes. how does someone feel about it? Or if it was someone else that maybe yes, RH you know, uh, applied to do the things, right? Probably, I would say like, yeah, go for it, RH. I'd be like, green light on RH calls on what he wants to do because I mean, the guy's, you know, he's pretty good at doing this stuff, right? So I wouldn't have a problem if it was RH um, at all. Um, and I, I would like to hope that RH would direct or watch or follow whoever else, if it was someone else, uh, making the moves. 
Roger. So then it's like, okay, if the person's not quite making the moves that rep, uh, what, replicate or resemble or, you know, are on the same trajectory, trajectory that, you know, RHs would be, then that guy should be fired. Calls for the Bitcoin price. Sorry, it, uh, August of 2017, make his Bitcoin calls with two and three months of advance. So now all of a sudden, someone that was making calls at two and three months, all of a sudden it's going to FOMO mm -hmm. buy the top of Ethereum. And that's that's the part that I'm not, I'm a little confused, you know. I've seen the Gotwell make stupid moves, you know. I've seen the Gotwell double the price against themselves oh, yeah. in yeah. April or March of 2020. And, you know, it was great for us, you know? So, yeah, great. It was a great move. But for a trader, it's not a good move. You know, like, if you double the price against yourself because either you don't know about slippage, you don't know how to do the swaps, or you don't have patience to enter in, you know, in DCA and, and, and not to eat all that slippage, I, I don't consider that a smart move. So, I, I would be concerned if someone like that were to handle these type of swaps. Yeah, but if you look at RH's post there, he straight directly said that, like, don't buy against yourself. Watch your slippage. Yeah, like not too long ago. That was maybe two months ago. He made a post that said exactly what you just said. Like, you want to buy something and it goes up, you know, and then you want to sell it, but you're really selling against yourself because you're catching slippage on the way back down or however it works, right? Something like that. And then you end up at, like basically even. Face. Yeah, no. Exactly. Oh, you or, or or which it'll be like I said, it'll be a great trade in two or three years when ETH is at five grand, and everyone's gonna be like, "Oh my God, how did you know?" You know what I mean? Like, how do you know to make a trade like that? Or like, uh, yeah, it was underwater for a minute. So I'm just a little concerned because, like I said, for a minute there, like a bunch of people in the community were saying that it was just that he was earning yield with that ETH or the die s die or whatever and then yesterday i go in and check and there's no die there's no you know there's just a thirty eight hundred dollar buy that if i mean if he's gonna use it for for taxes it's, it's gonna be good right <laughs> I, I, was trying to, I was trying to find yeah. that right um i forget who posted it, but someone was speculating that oh he was using that yield that die yield for uh -huh. lawyer fees like just to pay the lawyers instead of his own cash, but I couldn't find where. That but that's the thing. There's no die though. There's no die earning <laughs> yield. You know what I mean? Like I, I thought there was die earning yield for the last three months. There, there's none. <coughs> or at least I couldn't find it. <coughs> I mean, I, I see. I got into the Paulsex address, and then what I saw was a bunch of consolidated swaps of die into another like eight or whatever wallets. And then those wallets swapped into ETH. So, I mean, I, I, even that wasn't that smart because it was like, well, why not try to like run the... Anyways, I'm not going to say that because then it's going to look like they're trying to hide something. But if, if what he was trying to do was just kind of um, do what he had done with the, with, the, with the dollar addresses, so divide some of that, you know, energy, why do it like that? Why not try to like... I, I don't know. I, well, I would have you know, I would have I would have hidden that swap from you guys. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean if I was to try and say like I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna put this into there, um, you know, from whatever that die and then swap it in ETH or whatever, or whatever sorry, whatever the ETH thing that he bought, whoever bought it at thirty eight hundred, right? With how many addresses bought up that? Probably like eight, I think eight? it was something okay, like that. Yeah, yeah, he just he swapped like, you know, he sent like ten million, thirty million, twenty million, two hundred yeah, million. Yeah. That's 25 like million that into all these wallets. Uh -huh. Yeah, so those are big numbers, right? So, I mean, diversifying yeah. wallets, too, also is protection tactic um, rather than being a single point of failure. And then yeah, that part for sure. sure. Yeah, and then if I wanted to say, okay, now I got 10 mil here, 10 mil, 10 mil, 10 mil, 10 mil, right? And I wanted to ease or something, right? Just because maybe it's better at holding a little bit, even if you're buying at 38 might hold a little stronger than you know i don't know maybe not better than die i guess but uh but then you have a uh, more ways to get back in you know what i mean you have different avenues you got 10 different ways to like instead of having one wallet and having to do you know 10 trades you have 10 wallets that can do one trade so uh i'm not sure if maybe that's a tactical way to do it i don't it know could be i know at one point they got well you could tell it was doing that because um they had so thick bags that they were just looking for avenues to, you know, just to get liquidity. I still think that that play from Bank X, that's what it was. You know, like at some point, someone must have told them, like, hey, this, you might be able to unload like $10 million through here if these guys uh, finally come up with their stable. Uh, 
And, you know, someone that doesn't want to eat all that slippage, I'm sure that that, that was an attractive proposition, you know? It is, though, because, I mean, well, for someone, like, I had a friend of mine, yeah, like, an acquaintance, whatever, and they, their family wanted to put a whole bunch in crypto. It never ended up working out, but it was, like, quite a bit of money, man. Like, I'm talking, like, over, like, $20 million. And they're like, hey, okay, nice. Cap, you know, you know what you're doing in crypto? Let's, uh, we're going to ask you how to do this. I was like, dude, holy moly, like, you're going to just wreck charts, right? Unless you just go into exactly. Bitcoin. I was like, dude, you're going to have to spread this across the board. And, like, how far do you want to go down the grapevine of, like, you want to go right into, like, you know, into small uh, LP pools? Like, how far do you want to break this up? It's like a full-time job, you know what I mean? So, like, if you have, like, a big chunk like that, I was like, wow. Dang, I, I hadn't that. thought about yeah, that, like though. Huge. It's like, man, I looked at it for like three days. I said, man. <laughs> three days of soft, yeah, bro. Like, yourself, That's when you pull you out the Red Bulls, like, coffee, you know, like overnight, making slobs and not trying to wreck the chart against yourself. Wow. Exactly. Lord. I I hadn't thought of that, Cap. And you're right. All that effing slippage. Ay, ay, ay. So it's almost like even even if the markets are, you know, bumping, there's all kinds of volume, there's all kinds of liquidity, he'll still wreck those charts. Yeah. I hadn't yeah. even thought about that until like I, someone was like, why did why did he buy on Ethereum side? The what the what? I'm saying you got to break it down to like small yeah. things that like a thousand dollars, twelve hundred bucks, five hundred dollars, right? So you take that amount of thing. And then try to break it down so far that it doesn't really no, wreck bro, you, you need to see you need to see these wallets. Boy, these I wallets, know. bro. Like uh, I'm telling you, bro, like the the test fees, the test runs were like three grand. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, like normally you do a test run for like you said like two bucks, three bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the first test run. It was like three grand, bro. I started laughing so hard when I saw that. I was like, "Damn!" Like that, yeah. That's someone else. So that three Gs is someone else, like two dollar test send, yeah. Which is yeah. <laughs> and then you can see that like, he starts scaling. You know, like he did like uh, ten million, thirteen million, twenty million, twenty five mil, two hundred mil. So you could tell that um, there was some. Uh, Definitely some diversification happening at the moment. I just I hadn't thought about that because the only time I kept thinking about slippage is when someone started saying, and this was probably like four months ago, three months, that they were saying that why didn't he use all that money to buy Impulse? And I was like, if he tries to bring all that money at once, I mean, it's going to wreck the crap out of something, you know? Well, it would just be like a big dump signal for everybody, possibly, unless it just continues. Yeah, freak people like out. Next, you know, yeah, it'll freak people out. But I think the most strongest best way to do it would be uh you know just gently roll into it you know like yeah. but funny funny enough that signal people will be like wait where why is he going here and then outsiders go well let's explore but yeah it's a double-edged sword true in the end of the day that was the other thing that i was thinking i was like do you guys think if it was like a little you know little gamemanship as in, like, hey, let's <laughs> get a couple people. Yeah. Well, I, I was just thinking, I was like, what if we, you could get a, a, a couple people to fumble into into that top or something? I don't know. I don't know. It's just the, the, in the Spanish group yesterday, they were talking about, I mean, he was trying to shake out some whales or something like that. But I was like, that's probably not. That's a tough go. Yeah. Right. Whales, unless they want to leave, it's like, have fun exactly whales, bro. like they're either there still or they're not and that's all it is with whales you know you see them and that's it you got your binocs on them you got glasses on them okay mm -hmm. if they're still in the ocean they're still swimming true i had that debate with lit the other day because we, we were trying to i guess look at the debate from different angles you know are the whales positive or the negative are there all these benevolent whales there's good whales i mean <sighs> If I wanted to try to ever be a whale, I'm not, but I'd rather be like a killer whale, you know, because it's fast. It's actually a dolphin, right? It's a dolphin, but, uh, you know, fast, not so big. If I was, and that's what I found out about Dolphin you. is the way to go, bro, because yeah, dolphin, you can still splash with like these like slippages under five yeah, percent. Baby, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, if anyone that's higher than that, they're going to have to be patient, or... Or to learn to provide liquidity, which we tell everyone to do, you know, like it's 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 not that big a deal, especially if you're doing USDC hacks or USDC pulse. 
Or Paul's die, man. That's where the biggest whales are. Right. Or Paul's die. Exactly. Exactly. It's just if, if they're trying to cash out and then just avoid that slip, it's just, just in 21, I saw that all the time. Like almost every other swap that was more than half a million dollars, it was eight, nine percent slippage. And that hurts, bro. It hurts me yeah, to see like 50 grand just burn because someone doesn't want to like take a quick course on like, you know, on liquidity providing. It would be nice though if well i guess that's why if someone was gonna do like less someone wanted to do a big buy on anything it'd be like big buy on bitcoin right because it would have less slippage because it's so big and heavy you would you know, like how much does it take to mess around with bitcoin right to actually make it do anything would be like, okay sure. but uh coming from like our side further down the road like one two three steps further down the road and then even maybe a bit down the gravel road and then up the mountain right you know so it's uh Eating that eight percent. I remember the first time a hex though was like claiming your hex or getting your hex was like crank that slippage up to eight percent, baby. That was the ticket. Yeah, I just I'll I mean I'll eat ten percent slippage if you're I'm, I'm doing like a I don't know like a three hundred dollars swap. Yeah, <laughs> eight 